Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make some sweatpants. I've been hesitant about dyeing these sweats for a really long time. I've had them for several months. Um, they are the independent trading company brand, and I find it to be a very inferior product, and I'm really disappointed by it. A lot of you saw my crop top hoodie sweatshirt tutorial where it had a ton of pilling and if you haven't seen it, I recommend it. So I really held off on doing these sweats, but I have them, I might as well dye them. You know, what's the worst that could happen, right? So you wanna start by folding them in half and then lining up all of the seams and then smoothing them out. Once you have them all smoothed out, take a washable marker and mark out your pattern. And then pleat along this line, making it as straight as possible. The material being folded over is a lot thicker than a t-shirt, so it does take a little bit of wrangling, but just stay with it, you'll get it done. Now that you have them all pleated up, it's time to secure them. And for this project, I'm using kite string. If you don't have kite string, you can use rubber bands. It really is just a matter of preference. The reason I'm choosing to go with the kite string is because I have a little more control over the tension. With rubber bands, they're either going to be just right, too tight, or possibly loose. So again, it's a matter of preference.
Once you get your project all secure, work your way back to where you started from and then just tie off the kite string with a simple double knot. And I just want to report back to you guys and say thank you very much. Um, Mio told me that he's gotten like 100 subscribers. Um, I want to just tell you that I really think that's awesome, you guys, because you're showing the support for the tie-dye community. So way to go, you guys. And for those of you that haven't gone over to his channel and subscribed, it's Mio's tie-dye. And he's up and coming on YouTube, and he's doing a really great job. So show him the love. Using a washable marker, I mark out my pattern. And I'm doing these at about a one inch interval. The next step is to build yourself some type of an ice barrier. I prefer to use these silicone cake molds that I got from Amazon and I have them linked down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie dye. But if you don't have the silicone cake molds, you could use cardboard or foil. Well, you could really use anything as long as it's going to hold the ice in. So I have to apologize guys, I don't know what happened, but I lost the footage of me placing the dye on the sweatpants. So all I have right now is some time lapse of the ice melting. So do you guys just sit and stare at your ice? Sometimes I do because it's so beautiful just to see the colors emerge. Now that the ice is melted, you can see my dye pattern. So I did all the purples on the right side and then I did deep space on the left side and I wanted to do that for contrast. There was still a lot of undissolved dye, so I gave it a quick little sprinkle of soda ash and then added a second layer of ice, and then I batched it 24 hours after the ice melts. It's been 24 hours since the ice has melted, and now it's time for the rinse out. And you wanna start by using cold water, and that's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric, and then gradually increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do a plain hot water cycle. I do a second hot water cycle using Kirilon, which is formerly known as Synthrobol. And then I do a third hot water cycle using Millsoft, which brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. Now for independent trading company brand, I was instructed to try washing them alone so that you don't get the pilling. Okay, that's great. And for this project, I did it. I washed them alone. But how realistic is that, you guys? Do you think when you give your product out to a consumer that they're just going to wash them all by themselves all the time to avoid pilling? No, they're not. So. I guess it's just my personal beef. I don't like this brand. I will never buy it. And so buyer beware. Okay, after it's done in the washing machine, I put it in the dryer and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here's our sweats after they've been washed and dried. And I don't love them and I don't hate them. I'm not a fan of this brand like I had mentioned before. There is some pilling. It's not as bad as a sweatshirt because I washed them alone, but it's just not practical. And then the main reason why I'm not over the moon about them is my dye placement. I wanted the, like the stripe to be on the outside of the leg, not right up the rear end crack part of it. Um, I made it almost look like a thong underwear or two huge uh, cheeks and you know that's not a good look so I take the responsibility on my dye placement I should have done it the other way but I got decent color saturation uh, I do like the color combination 
you know, the pilling, it's not the worst, but I will not buy this product again. And so I have now said it two times. So it's a uh, buyer beware, you guys. If you don't mind a little bit of pilling, then go for it. But I'm going to give these to my daughter so it doesn't matter. But there's no way that I would um, give these to a friend or try to even sell them. No way. So anyways, what do you guys think? Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Leave a thumbs up and then click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.